How's it going, humans? Today, we are making a secret hidden door. So I'm starting this build using the same methods I did with the secret bookcase, in that I don't have a plan. I haven't made a drawing, and I'm just gonna figure it out as I go. I mean, it can't be harder than a bookcase, right? So with our 2x4s cut down and fit into place, it was time to mount our invisible hinges. Now don't worry, there's gonna be a link in the description for you. Just go check it out. Now with our hinges mounted, it was time to make a panel for the door itself. A 4x4 piece of MDF would have been perfect for this, but I didn't have any on hand, and I didn't feel like buying more. So I ended up using a 2x8 piece, and it just so happened that it was exactly the amount I needed when I cut it down and made it into three panels. Okay, so here's the idea so far. We're going to have panel, panel, panel. So instead of taking a second to ice my knee, I decided that it would be a better idea to have a little fight with a garbage bag. You guys ever tried to open these? Like, they're just, they're just frustrating. Well, after I successfully got that mission accomplished, I could carry on and glue up my panel. Now this did mean I had some extra cleanup to do, but for me, it was a small price to pay over going and buying a new sheet of MDF, and then just having this scrap sitting around still. Next, I popped in my dado stack and ran a groove down my hinge. Hinge? Board? Not my hinge, the board. See, look, look, dado, groove, board. You get the idea. I also decided to be an arborist and pull out a tree branch. Next, I marked out where we were going to make our cut and I set up my track saw. So no, I don't have a track saw, but I do have an eight foot piece of aluminum tubing. I think it's a fence post. This just goes to show that you don't need a fancy track saw as long as you have a long straight edge and do some measuring. You can run your circular saw and get a nice straight cut. MDF is just horrible. It's like raining particles all over the place. So definitely mask up and run your vacuum when you can. Now it was time to do a test fit. Oh. Maybe it's a little too good of a fit. So I ended up scribing a line on the bottom to match the curvature of my floor. And I just cut this out freehand with the router. Just nice and slow. It's MDF, it's not gonna grab. Next it was time for a quick sand and getting on with our glue up. So I didn't clamp this piece in place. It's a pretty tight fit. Uh, uh, it would be a fit when it fit. There we go. Smack, smack, smack. Next I added some poplar to the back just for a little extra support, mainly because it was separate panels. Quick. Next came the task that everybody loathes, which is sanding drywall. And then some painting, which I actually don't mind. Look how pretty it is. Oh, that's gonna be cool. Super happy. So with Hugh's thumbs up of approval, it was time to have a little snack as I figured out how to install all of this trim. So with our trim all sorted, it was time to take our door off and put on the baseboard. I just used a flush cut trim router 
to match that angle. Angle? It's not an angle. Groove? Sure. Next, I want to add a little accent to the front of the door just to make it <laughs> not look like a door. So to make this thing close and latch, I got a gate latch. I also got a little pusher thing. So I was thinking about using this to push it open. I have some wire and I have some eyelets. And we're gonna drill a hole and we're going to run the wire down so it can activate the gate latch so that we can do like a book thing here. Or maybe a secret thing here. Button. No, book. Doing a book. We're gonna drill a hole, get some wire fed through, put some eyelets in, run it all the way down, and then that will activate our switch. So I'm gonna do that, and it's really tight in here, so you're not coming with me. So I've been pooling around with this for a little while. Found out some things. I found out the wire is a little too thin, um, and it knots, so that's not good. So I'm gonna replace that with the cord. Uh, I wasn't really liking the gate latch, how it was like clicking together, but it was all loose and it just wasn't nice. So I'm gonna try this like patio door, screen door latch. I'm gonna go play with this for a couple of hours. So you'll see how that goes in a second. So with the door sorted out with the new latch, I decided I really liked this idea and I wanted to put it on the bookcase as well. So we had installed a little pantry door ball bearing style latch in part one and I wasn't too happy with it. So I popped this guy in place and it turned out to be a whole lot better. The only downside is now I need to figure out a way to actually activate the latch from the outside. Can you guess what I figured out? Can you? At this point, the last thing to do was prime and paint our trim, and we can call this build done. Check this out. two in our series about making hidden things. So we have our hidden door all done and complete. Uh, next we are going to make a leather bound book to open it up. So you can check that out and then we're going to come back and we're going to make a little lamp to open up the bookcase that we made in part one. So check those out, they'll be somewhere around here. Once again, thank you very much for investing your time and watching me build a thing. Hope to see you next time. Have a wonderful day.